thanks for joining me today. In this video, we're going to talk about the basics of Gmail. If you're a Google Apps for Education user and your school has added Gmail to your list of apps that you can use, all you have to do to log in is sign into your Google account and you can use the App Launcher menu and go straight to Mail or you can go up to the Omnibox on your Chrome browser and type in mail.google.com. Once there, you'll notice that Gmail is pretty basic. At the top left, you've got a menu where you can swap between mail, contacts, or tasks. And then you've got your compose button and a series of folders that you can sort your mail into. Now, in another video later on, we'll talk about how you can sort mail using labels. But for this video, we're going to focus mainly on how to compose a message. So if you click on the Compose button, it will launch a small window so that you can still see your inbox and you can compose your message. But if you go to the top right of that new message window, you can go to a full screen pop-out so that you can compose your message. Now, anytime you're composing a message, make sure that you have uh, at least one recipient in the to line. But if you look out here on the far right, you do have the option of adding recipients in a carbon copy line or in a blind copy line. Remember, a BCC or blind copy line means that you can send this to someone, but if you have other recipients, they will not see that you sent it to that person as well. Uh, this is nice if you are sending a reply to a parent, but you also want to copy a principal or a counselor in that message. Also, just as far as basic email etiquette, you want to put a subject line in so that the receiver can see what the message is about before they open it. And then you want to add something to the body of the message. But what I want to focus on in this video for the most part is the, the tools that are at the bottom of the screen. If you look at the bottom, you have the option of changing the font that's in your message to any of these font styles down here. Now I'm going to add a little bit of information to my email so that we can work with it using these tools. So I'm going to take a second to do that. So now I've got a couple of lines of text here that I can work with. And if you look at the bottom, let's say for instance I want to change the font of this message so I can highlight the font and change it down here by clicking and selecting any of these options below. I'm going to change this to Tahoma. And of course, if I want to make that bigger, I've got this, the font size tool that I can use to change it from small to normal or large. And then you've got some other options such as bold, italicized, underline, and you can change the text color. So let's say, for instance, I want to change the text color of just one or two words. Then I can highlight those words and bring attention to those by changing the color of the font. Now, in addition to that, I have some other things on here that I can use, such as alignment tools. So, so if I wanted to set a specific line up to be centered and bring attention to it, then I can highlight that line and center it on the page, as you can see here. Um, and then we have numbered and bulleted text lists. And then we have the ability to promote or indent any of the text that we have on the page. Uh, you can also add quotes if you want to. And then you have the ability to highlight text and remove any formatting if formatting has been added to that text, say for instance. Now at the very bottom, this is what really makes Gmail work so well. You have the ability to add additional formatting options, but in addition to that, you can attach files from your computer or they can be files from your Google Drive account. So let's take, for instance, I want to add a file from Google Drive. I just click on the Drive icon, and because I'm using a Google Apps for Education account, any files that I have in my Google Drive on that account, I can access and link from here. So let's say, for instance, I want to add this PDF file, and I have the option of inserting that as a Drive link or an attachment. Now the difference is, if it's a Drive link, then it will give that recipient a link to the file so that they can view my document in their Chrome browser. And if I do attachment, it just makes a copy of that and attaches it to the email. So I'm going to choose that option and click insert. 
And so then you can see down here a merged PDF. That is the copy of that file that has been attached to this email. If I were to do that as a link, it would look like this. So it's just slightly different. Here you see the link, here you see the attachment. We also have the ability to insert a photo. So if you had a photo from your Drive account or from your computer that you'd like to upload, you just click the camera icon and you can either upload or you can choose a web address if you have the image URL. And then insert link. If you have links in your text, as I have here, like for instance, here we have the address for Google Mail. If I highlight that and click on the link icon, it automatically creates a link to that. So it, it's hyperlinked in my text of my email and the recipient can just click on it to go straight there. You also have the option of highlighting text and making normal text a link that users can click on and go to. So if I highlight tutorial videos here and click on the link icon, then I can go to my website and let's say for instance I want users to go straight to my tutorials page. Then I can copy that address, go back to my mail and link to, I'll just select web address, paste in the address I just copied and click OK. Now the recipients of this email will be able to click on this text and go straight to that page on my website. And then finally, you also have the ability to add emoticons if you'd like to. So those are some options that if you're not familiar with them, they're very handy to use when you're composing an email. Now, one more piece of information that you might find interesting is that if you look at the bottom right of your compose screen, you do have the ability to discard this draft if you decide you don't want to use it but you'll notice that it says saved here. So everything that I've done so far has automatically been saved as a draft copy. And if I close it, I can always get back to it later by going to the drafts folder over here on the left. But in addition to that, you'll see that I have a more options button. And here we have the ability to add labels to this email before we've even sent it. And in another video, we'll talk about labels. This is very handy because if you create labels and add them to your emails before they're sent out, then any replies that you get back from people will automatically have that same label applied to them. And it makes it so much easier to keep your inbox organized and so that you can get to those important emails later by looking for them by the label that has been attached to them. So when you're finished, all you have to do is go to the bottom left and click send and your email will go out. Now notice that this pop-up has come up. I have included an attachment from my Google Drive and it's telling me that the drive files that I've attached are not shared with the recipient. Now this is nice because if I forget to do that in Google Drive, it's giving me the option of doing that now. And so I'm going to go ahead and hit share and send and it will automatically change the sharing settings on that account for me and send it to my recipient. And there it goes. Well, that's a basic rundown on composing a message in Gmail. If you have any questions, please feel free to let me know and look for my next video on attaching labels to your email. Thanks again.